Today on Knives 101, we talk about some industry standard terminology. I promise to make it as fun as I can. Terminology helps us all communicate better about what the hell it is we're all talking about. And today I'm going to go over the common terms that I use almost every single day in the knife industry when I'm making knives and describing knives, etc. But as I said before, not everybody knows these terms, so for you more experienced guys, by all means, bear with me, you could learn something. So uh, without wasting a whole lot of time, let's just jump right into this. Handle and blade. Duh. Tip and butt. The tip is the pointy end, the butt is the not pointy end, that is the polar opposite of the tip. Not to be confused with the back of the knife, which is actually the spine as opposed to the edge. That's the ow part and the no ow part, the tang. This is usually part of the blade that the handle is fixed to. It can be a full tang like this one and be exposed all the way around, offering the most strength and a hidden tang like this one, hiding the metal completely underneath the handle material. It offers something that has the potential to be more aesthetically pleasing, but not quite as strong as the full tang. But in real world situations though, both options are perfectly pragmatic for real world use. A third lesser known option is called a mortise tang, which is a combination of both full and hidden tang. The spine is usually left exposed and finished with the handle and the bottom is fully enclosed in the handle material. This isn't necessarily weaker or stronger than the parent styles by any means, but it has its own particular aesthetic. This part right here is called the plunge line. It signifies the start of the grind to the edge from stock flat material. Its beginning has no recommended starting place, it's really kind of just up to the maker. Now, I have no idea who came up with these ridiculous names, but it's common terms. So, here we go. This is called the choil. It is the part of the metal on the bottom behind the edge, usually before the handle starts. And this is the ricasso, the part of the blade in between the plunge line and the beginning of the handle. But some knives have neither. They just roll that way. The fuller, also sometimes called a blood groove for marketing, is this cool addition to the blade. It lightens and stiffens the blade by hollow grinding, forging, or milling a channel along the spine and above the edge. Old style weight and butchers, marbles, uh, westerns, use these extensively in their knives. Proper fullers, in combination with a good heat treatment, can lighten the blade quite a bit without losing any strength at all in the tool. False grind, also called a swedge, can be an aesthetic lightening of the spine via a grind against the spine, which also thins the tip for finer work. Sometimes, this is sharpened, which I which I personally never do. I don't particularly care for it, but some people absolutely love it. And who am I to stand in the way of love? This, as most of you may know, is called a guard, which is usually a piece of metal, thin or thick, placed at the beginning of the handle behind the edge, shaped to guard your finger from the edge when using your knife. It comes in a variety of different styles, which are all preferential depending on who made it or even how that maker was feeling at the time. Regardless, that metal thingy protecting your fingers, that's what that's called. In contrast to a guard, this is a self guard, which is a guard that functions exactly the same as the metal guard I just showed you, but is built into the handle, which is my personal favorite type of guard. Now, these terms are just common terms that I use every day when I discuss knives with my crew, my friends, and my customers. But if it wasn't enough to whet your appetite, fear not. I again have links for you. Check this link out right here to go to A.G. Russell's compendium of knife making terminology, and you can whet your appetite further. And you and more experienced guys, I commend you for sticking around. Seriously, it means the world to me. Thank you. Also this past week, Kyle Verstig, average Iowa guy here on YouTube, recently invited me to do a video with him explaining how to make sharp grind lines in handmade knives. You can watch that video right here. Also, if you've never seen me grind knives before, check this out because it's how I do it. Well, my friends, that's it for today's episode, but fear not, I will be back in the future with even more information. So do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.